Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Well, today, uh, my radiator blew. So, right here, if you look, it developed a crack. So if I wipe this off, it comes right back and it starts to, starts to seep out. So, uh, the truck's not overheating. I caught it in time, but I've been noticing a smell of uh, radiator fluid coolant. So I'm like, well, it's coming from somewhere and I uh, finally figured it out. It was dripping, so it's getting worse. So we got to change this and I'll show you how to do it when we come back. All right, just received the radiator. Uh, so from AutoZone, it's a B2075 Duralast from my 2000 Nissan Xterra. And look what arrived in the mail today. I ordered it a couple days ago and you'll see that this is gonna help with this radiator change uh, very much. I'll put a link in the description in case you want one of your own. But on Amazon, I have a set of, of uh, pliers that will help me take these, these hose clamps off. So basically what I can do, you see this, what I can do now is I can put this on the hose clamp and I used to have to fight with the with the pliers. I can put this on the hose clamp and crush it with my finger and it lifts and it grabs that hose clamp and it opens it up. You see what it's doing? Oh, you don't see what it's doing. Check this out. See that? And I have a lock in place to keep it locked. Kind of cool. It's your coolant drain ports right at the bottom after you lift this flap. So I'm going to take a bucket and drain all the coolant out of the radiator all right i took my radiator cap off too and and always always make sure your radiator is cooled off after it's been overheated or whatever that caused it to do this you don't absolutely need to see this it's just a radiator plug but that's how you get it out and let it fill up the bucket. Okay, as it's draining in the very bottom, uh, I allowed it to drain easier with taking the, the cap off. I'm gonna take this clamp off, I'm gonna take this clamp off, I'm gonna twist the hose off, the hose off. I'm gonna take this bolt, this bolt, this bolt. Okay, these are 10 millimeter. Take. Oh, here we go. I'll take the reservoir securing bolt off. That way, I can take the clamp, uh, the radiator support clamp off. Next. What's cool about this repair is I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna be able to clean my, you see how that clamp came right off? I'm gonna be able to clean my condenser fan for my AC while I have this radiator out. So I wanna clean it out from the back. Always put the, the nut back on there. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull this off the radiator and pull this little snorkel tube out. All right, we don't even need to get rid of this and kind of fold that back over the engine, possibly. It's gonna fight me. There we go. Don't come back. There we go. Perfect. All right, get this piece of rubber off of here because that goes. That goes later. All right, now the radiator is kind of wobbly because it doesn't have that support. All right, we're gonna take this hose clamp loose. I'm gonna show you how easy this is with this new tool. 
All right, I'm placing it here. And it has a little lock here with some, with a some lock. All right, there we go. I'm putting it on the, the clamp. It locks in place. I can move it back if I need to. All right, I'm gonna let it, I'm just gonna let it hold tension there. And check it out. So easy, right? And then this one, I can use a pair of pliers for this one. I like these little pliers. I'm gonna stay out of the way. Next, we got these two 10 millimeter bolts right here that hold the, the fan shroud on. We'll take, we can take the whole thing out actually. Amazing. It'll take no time at all. All right, there's one more hose at the bottom. It's probably gonna make a big mess. But I'm going to use this clamp technique on that one. Also, all right, this should pop right up. This fan shroud, because the fan itself has a cutout. It has a cutout for the fan. And the fan shroud. Well, I'm running into issues here with this reservoir. This, um, this here. So I'm gonna get this reservoir loose. And <laughs> sorry about the sh shaky camera. It doesn't want to come out. It's like uh, in there. Uh, maybe all I need is it to. You know, it needs to be able to move. So I got the hose loose, or the hose clamp loose. And again, it made more of a mess, but I have that, I have that bucket down there just for this reason. All right, so this, this particular radiator does not have any automatic transmission fluid lines connected to it. So what you would have to do is take the automatic fluid transmission lines loose and, and uh, you would need to, um, drain those as well but here we're gonna pull this radiator out of here all right so it should be ready to come out quick and easy look at that look at that dirty radiator wow oh it's dirty look at that i can't even well you can sort of see through it but it's a mess all right so on the bottom there's going to be another couple of uh, rubber grommets you're going to want to save those as well they twist right off. Okay, there you go. All right, so if the radiator looked bad, I bet you that condenser looked bad too. So let me get some, let me get some simple green, soak it in, and then I'm gonna squirt it out with the, with the water hose real good. And one of my first jobs was with my uh, my friend from high school, and what we would do is we would um, clean aircraft at the uh, little small airport we have in town. I grew up in a small town, um, and the way the way you get bug guts off an airplane that's going 200 miles an hour is Simple Green. It was uh, I never even heard of it before that. And we would we would coat it with Simple Green, let it set a minute, and then uh, and then scrub it off. But it was easier to scrub when it had been soaked in Simple Green. So there you go. So we're gonna. I'll let that soak. Get it in there liberally. There you go. And the good thing about Simple Green, it's biodegradable, so you don't have to worry about using a ton of it. 
Uh, it's non-toxic, so you can get it all over your hands if you need to. No big deal. But uh, but yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do is after after we get everything rinsed off, uh, there's there's a grommet hole down there. You see that one? And there's another one right there, back there. We're gonna put the grommets back in there and slide the new radiator, radiator down in there. This is gonna take no time at all. All right, so I shut the garage door so I can have a little bit better angle to spray in at. So, or I didn't have to worry about spraying into the garage. So there you go, just from the top down, get rid of all that dirt, grime. It's gonna make your AC work way better. If I would have known it was this easy to take the radiator out, I would have done it before to clean this out. What kind of bug guts in there and everything else? All right, so let's have a look at the new radiator. Nice and clean. This is an automatic transmission capable radiator. Uh, I don't think it'll interfere with anything down there. Uh, you really don't need to worry about, you really don't need to worry about anything. This is where your um, fan shroud will rest and it has everything that the other one had in it as well. Uh, plus a bunch of stickers. So. They do not give you a new cap, so you gotta reuse your old cap, but uh, let's go ahead and slide. All right, before we slide it in there, be very careful with the radiator, okay? Don't lean it to where it'll hurt the fins on anything, but we're gonna put the, uh, gonna put the grommets back in there. There's two grommets, all right, and then we're gonna carefully lower it down to where the bottom things fit in the grommets carefully that way you don't put a hole in it right after you bought it this thing was like 160 bucks i'm gonna feel down there and feel the see if the grommets lined up there's one lined up and the other's lined up perfect appears to be taller than my old radiator. Hmm. All right, let's see. Yep, unfortunately it's taller than my other radiator. And we're back four days later. I had to get uh, one from rockauto.com. So let's open the box and see if they gave me the correct one. All right, so out of the box, it looks, uh, is packed really well i'm very happy with that um it's also looking like it's around the right size so here we go oh yeah it is the radiator so all right so lesson learned if you try to get a manual transmission radiator from autozone you're wrong because they don't sell those uh, all they sell is automatic transmission radiators so uh if you go to the website it's not going to work for you you have to go to rock auto all right so let's put this thing in it's probably really easy all right so i got my grommets down there ready to go um everything's open it's ready to go so let's get the radiator in here okay here we go let's get this down in here wires Once it's around here, you need to get your hand down in here and guide the grommets. Guide the grommets. All right, it's in. And again, we've cleaned our condenser for our air conditioner, so it should work really well. Okay. All right, so let's get the um, let's get the fan shroud back down in there.
And again, with the fan shroud, there are these little things that line up. And if you look down on your radiator, your radiator has those to aid in lining everything up. Now don't poke a hole in your radiator with your fan shroud plastic. So be very careful on the left and right sides so you don't do that. All right. These holes are lining up really well, so let me see if I have everything connected. That went right in its, in its spot. I don't think this side went in yet. Oh, they both went in. Perfect. Yeah, they both went in. All right, so let's put our our bolts back in here. There's a small fitment issue, um, but it's not a big deal. It's just, uh, the screws are having a hard time getting in there. That's all. Now I don't want to cross thread those in there, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my screwdriver attachment for my 10 millimeter. It helps me to kind of line it up easier. Nice. And when you tighten these down, you don't need to break the nuts off or the screws off into the holes. Just secure it. It doesn't need to be a incredibly tight. Again, it's a it's a small fitment issue. The screws are tight. You have to kind of move the, the plastic to the outward edges to get it to work. It's not that big of a deal. Alright, everything's tight. Alright, one of the last things we're going to do is place the, the, um, the brackets on where they need to go. Kind of put it on loosely just in case there needs to be some give movement somewhere and the bracket is actually right here. okay so align your air breather hose i put the i put the bracket grommet right there okay let's get this little really isn't this that big of a deal when you get the, the correct part, obviously. Okay, good. It's just slightly loose. All right, don't forget to put your cruise control. Actually, that's the main throttle cable. And we're gonna work on this one here. Getting everything back to where it goes. Yeah, slightly different. See how they don't line up? I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's not the end of the world. And we're almost ready to fill it up. You just gotta connect that hose at the bottom. Reservoir bolt. I'll show you what I'm talking about. That one. Now, what's cool about that that uh, pliers that I got is it holds the clamp 
<laughs> tight. So it's been holding the clamp for like four days. So let's uh, let's connect the bottom hose. Okay, we'll connect this hose. Make sure it's free of burrs. And then slide it on there all the way. Okay, now this clamp goes on there really easy. Now these are old hoses. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna replace all these hoses because it's probably on there too long. Typically what'll happen is if you don't get the hose clamp in the exact same spot you had it before, it'll start to leak. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to get in the same spot I had before. All right, so here goes. I'm gonna release the, I'm gonna release the clamp. And there it is. It's on and it's tight. All right, make sure this drain, drain uh, bolt is tight, the one that came with the radiator. And make sure everything is in there. So, problem I see is the radiator is not in its little spot it needs to be in. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to raise up the fan shroud and put it in the, in its correct spot. If you could take a look, this tab is not in the hole. I hope it. I hope it's um focusing correctly. So I'm gonna have to readjust the fan shroud. Okay, so I've readjusted it to where those tabs, if you can see it, are in their holes. And uh, what ended up happening is I had to um, take the right clamp off for the radiator, the uh, radiator support at the top. I had to take this loose again and uh, the radiator actually has a lip that it sits in on, on the radiator underneath there. So it was a perfect fit, I have to admit. And now we're gonna have to put these two bolts back in. Maybe they fit better now, uh, but I don't think it was a, an issue of it being up and down fitment, it was width fitment. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna reinstall those. So what I'm gonna do now is, if you can see, that's that's the hole it used to line up, and right here, it's it's uh it's slightly wider than the original radiator as far as the mounts are concerned. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna carefully use my Dremel tool with a burr attachment, and I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust the holes of the fan shroud. Because my fear is that as the heat, as it heats up and expands and then cools down and contracts, heats ex and expands, cools and contracts, my fear is that it will develop more cracks in these critical areas here. So that's why I want to kind of relieve some stress by making the holes a little wider out towards the edges. It's not going to be pretty, but here goes. Be careful. Let's see if that's the, let's see if that's any better as far as lining up the holes. Let's get this one in. Well, number one, there's no stress with the hole this time. It's not fighting me, which is good. Let's see about this side. On this side, there's no stress either. So it was a perfect amount of plastic taken off. So yeah, you might have to do that to alleviate some of the uh, differences in the remanufactured radiator process. Uh, you know, I guess they took the mold from Nissan or whoever made the, the uh, radiator from Nissan. All right, next, connect this hose and uh, We're gonna we're gonna need to get new hoses. This one's on there pretty tight. <laughs> need to choke up on it. it. Needs to come come further down. 
Yeah, we're gonna need to get new hoses for this truck, but as of now, I think we can manage it. Here it goes. This really is amazing, look at this. Just get it on there, <laughs> it goes all the way up. I've been wanting one of these forever. And I finally got, I finally got one. It just, it just makes this job way easier. And there it goes, it's on. All right, so we're gonna watch that for leaks, but let's go ahead and fill and bleed the radiator system. All right, so while connecting, trying to connect this um, hose, it is extremely loose. And uh, the reason why is it's old, number one, but number two, Half of it is thick and half of it is thin. So I'm gonna to try to cut this back and uh, feed it on uh, to where it's a little bit tighter fit. If not, I'm gonna to have to find a way to do that. So here we go. I'm gonna cut it back about right here. And as you can see, it's thicker there. So let's see, is it gonna fit? All right, it's way better. So yeah, it fits. So that's how to, that's how to fix that issue. Uh, let me get the let me get the clamp on there again. Feed the clamp on. Yeah, so you guys might have to run into that problem as well. There we go. Nice and tight now. All right, so we're about to fill the system. So I'll put a funnel there. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna fill it until we can't fill it anymore, and then we're gonna start the truck. We're gonna start the truck and put the heater on to where the the coolant is allowed through the heater passages, and all the air gets out of the system. All right, so it's all the way full. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start the truck. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to turn the um, it's going to turn the water pump, and the water pump's going to cycle all the fluid through the system. It's going to get through all the intake hoses it needs to go through. It's going to go through the heater core. It's going to flush everything out into the system, and the air will come out as well. So what I'll do is I'll run the truck with the um, the uh, radiator cap off of it uh, for a while until I bleed all the air out of the system. And then I will shut it and uh, monitor the temperature. All right, so it is it is fine so far. I'm expecting a burp here pretty soon. I will give it a little bit of gas, see what happens. Ah, there you go, a little bit. There is a little bit. There you go. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to monitor to make sure that it is full. There we go, see? Come on out of there. And it'll probably need, need more cooling here in a minute. I'm sure I have some bubbles in there somewhere. Kind of calmed down though. I bet you the AC is going to work way better. Oh, uh, I don't know if I told you guys or not, but I use a 50-50 coolant. Um, you can use the full strength coolant and mix it yourself with distilled water, but I'm lazy. I don't want to go hunt for distilled water, so I just buy the, I'll buy the coolant. Already mixed. Kind of easy. bubbles but uh, yeah when that thermostat opens I, I expect it to uh, release a lot of this fluid but let me go check the temperature right now it'll heat up real quick if you're not careful so there it is it's fine so far I'm waiting for that thermostat to 
I'm waiting for the thermostat to open. It's starting to get down further. The thermostat's about to open. Check that hot and cold level right there. Make sure it doesn't go any higher than that. All right, I think the thermostat's opening right now because that, that hose right there was cold a second ago and now it's warming up. And I have more bubbles. Oh yeah, I think it's opening. Yep, I hear the I hear the fan. I hear the fan on the front of the engine. down it's almost down and it's about time to refill it again and as you can see the idle has slowed down it was it was sitting about 1200 rpms uh, now the main fan has has started I can feel the air coming out it is it is dumping into the radio right now the uh, thermostat is fully open I don't have any more gurgling so we are almost done bleeding this system, but as you can see, it's still happening. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait here for a few more minutes until it's all done. But uh, last step is gonna be uh, checking for leaks underneath the truck, um, leaking in your hoses. Uh, next step after that is to actually get new hoses. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. And you saw how I'm gonna do it with my new tool. So hey. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content i make it all the time and this uh xterra is needy so i'm gonna keep the content coming so we'll see you next time on my channel i just fix it myself thanks for watching